Hello everyone, I am Jonathan Little for MyPokerCoaching.com and in this video, we are going to be discussing how to use GTO to win at poker. GTO stands for Game Theory Optimal and GTO strategies create a perfect balance by adjusting your bet size and hand ranges to make them unexploitable. Understand that you win at poker when your opponents make mistakes. You lose at poker when you make mistakes. And since when you play GTO, you're playing a perfectly balanced strategy, you do not make mistakes. And if you do not make mistakes, your opponent cannot win. Sounds good, right? However, you're going to find that it is impossible for us mere humans to accurately play GTO because it is quite difficult if not impossible for our feeble minds. Let's discuss the pros and cons of GTO because even though we cannot perfectly play it, we can replicate it to some extent. Some positives of GTO is that it works well against all player types. You don't even have to know what your opponents are doing. If you just play GTO and your opponents do anything else besides play GTO, you will win. GTO also is excellent against strong players who play very well. And in fact, this is what a lot of the absolute best players in the game aim to do. They just try to play closer to GTO than their opponents. And if they play closer to GTO than their opponents, even if they don't know what their opponents are doing wrong, they will win little bits of money here and there that add up to lots of bits of money in the long run. GTO is also excellent when you're playing its players you have no reads at all against. Now, very rarely should you have no reads at all. Say you show up to your local casino and you're playing 1-2 No Limit Hold'em. When you sit down at 1-2 No Limit Hold'em, you should presume your opponent plays like a typical 1-2 No Limit Hold'em player. They're probably going to be a little bit too loose and a little bit too passive. And you should not play GTO against someone who's a little bit too loose and too passive because if you instead exploit the mistakes they are making, you will win far more money. Some cons of GTO is that it is incredibly complex and difficult to implement properly. And, like I just said, it does not maximally exploit and take advantage of the mistakes your opponents are likely to make. That said, I think learning GTO is very important because if you know what good, strong poker strategy looks like, you can then adjust away from it when it makes sense to logically and correctly exploit the mistakes your opponents are making. If you don't know where to start, you're going to have a tough time knowing where to go. And GTO is a great thing to learn in general when it comes to poker. Let's discuss GTO inputs. Whenever you are studying GTO, you're going to be using a GTO solver. I'm going to show you an example in just a second. And in order to solve any poker scenario, you need to know a few things. First, you need to know the starting ranges. Which hands do people start with? And... With GTO solvers, you can actually adjust the starting ranges based on what your opponent is doing, or at least what you think they're doing. And maybe you don't play the perfect GTO preflop strategy, so you can adjust that a little bit. And this will start to give you different outputs than the perfect GTO versus perfect GTO strategy, because now you've adjusted some starting ranges. Um, next, the stack depths are very important. You're going to find that you use a very different strategy when you're playing 15 big blinds deep compared to when you're playing 100 big blinds deep. It's a very different game and requires different strategies and your hands will all play in very different manners. Also, in the solvers, you have to give it possible bet and, not bet A, bet and raise sizes. What a lot of people do wrong when they go to solve a GTO scenario is they only give it one or two bet sizes. They let it bet half pot or maybe a third pot and two thirds pot and that's it. And that will usually make the solver give you an output pretty quickly. The problem is it's going to be pretty inaccurate compared to what actual GTO is because in No Limit Texas Hold'em, there's no limit. You can bet any amount. And this is why you see when the best players run a solver, they often run it with something like six different bet sizes or more, like a 10% pot, 25% pot, 33% pot, half pot, two-thirds pot, pot, then one and a half times pot, two times pot, three times pot. And they'll see which bet size the solver's are airing towards. And usually it'll air towards two or three different bet sizes. And in that particular scenario, those are probably going to be the ones you should mostly use. Once you know the ones the solver mostly uses, you can then 
cut out the ones that are used very infrequently, and now you start to get a much more implementable strategy. Again, it's not the perfect GTO strategy because the perfect GTO strategy would use all the bet sizes. But again, for us mere humans, we have to simplify it a little bit. And the problem a lot of people do, or a problem a lot of people make is they try to oversimplify it to the point that then the outputs they're getting are not very good at all. It's easy to mess up with a solver. Also, you need to know the action on the previous betting rounds if you're looking at the um, the flop or the turn and the river, right? Because you need to know, did it go check, check on the flop or bet raise on the flop, whatever. That's going to heavily impact the ranges and that will then impact the solver's outputs. Any change to any of these will impact the solution the GTO solver gives you. You're going to find that GTO uses mixed strategies, meaning with each particular hand, the GTO output will be to do a different thing with the same type of hand a large amount of the time. Most of us humans presume they play a specific hand the same way each time. For example, say you raise before the flop of pocket aces, your opponent calls, the flop comes. Most people think, I bet aces every time. It's always good, right? You just wanna get money in the pot. That's what people do. But you'll find the GTO strategy is probably gonna check aces some portion of the time unless your range is so strong that you bet with everything. We'll get to that in a minute. So let's take a look at this solver output right here. This is just the random hypothetical spot. The dark red, like we see pocket aces is dark red for some chunk of it. This is using a big bet size. Let's just presume it's pot. The light red is a small bet size. Let's presume 33% pot. And the green is check. So in this scenario, take a look at pocket aces. Pocket aces is betting big a third of the time, betting small a third of the time, and checking a third of the time. And this is part of developing a balanced strategy because now if you bet big or bet small or check, your opponent does have no idea if you have aces. Well, they know you have aces in your range some portion of the time. You can literally tell them what you're doing in this scenario. And, and this is what makes you very difficult to play against because when you bet big, sometimes you have aces. When you bet small, sometimes you have aces. And when you check, sometimes you have aces. And we're going to see that some hands in this you know, random hypothetical scenario prefer to play in all sorts of different ways. Like in this spot, pocket jacks is checking almost every time. Pocket sevens is betting very frequently. There's probably a seven on the flop and you have a set. Um, we'll see like king high is checking a lot, for example. But we do see a lot of these hands are using a mixed strategy where they're betting sometimes and checking sometimes. And this is very difficult for us humans to implement. But you should at least try. You should realize that in a lot of scenarios, you are going to want to use mixed strategies, which is easier said than done. You want to make sure that you are actively learning from the solver because many patterns repeat themselves. So when you're looking at a lot of solver outputs, study and learn. I can already tell you, for example, I don't know what this spot is, but I can tell you, you are out of position, almost certainly, because from out of position, you have to check a lot. That's the green. Hands in gray, by the way, are folded. I don't know if I said that. Um, also, the flop probably contains an eight and a seven. You probably have a set here with these hands, right? They're, they're gonna bet a lot. These draws here, jack 10 and 10, nine, because there's an eight and a seven on the board are gonna be betting a decent amount of the time, right? I can look at this and tell you roughly what this spot is. I'm telling you, I, I literally have no clue where this image is from. So this is a spot where you see patterns and you learn patterns, and that's gonna allow you to start playing closer to the GTO strategy. And if, as you study solver outputs more and more and more and more and more, you're going to see these things, and you're going to learn these things, and you're going to be able to actively implement these things in game to help you play closer and closer to the solver, and you're going to get better and better as you study more and more. So here's some patterns that hold true in almost all scenarios. First, when your range is heavily favored over your opponent's range, you put in a lot of chips. Now, what does that mean? That means that if you ran your entire range at this point in time against your opponent's entire range at this point in time, if you're a big favorite, you should put money in. So let's say you raise from first position with only the best hands. And let's say your opponent calls from the big blind with all sorts of junk, right? If the flop comes ace, king, queen, that's really good for the initial raiser from early position because they have a lot of aces, they have a lot of kings, they have a lot of queens, right? And the bad hands often have a jack or a 10 for a draw. So you're going to be betting in this spot about 100% of the time. The alternative to this is when you are heavily disadvantaged, you check a lot. Say the flop instead comes six, five, four. You raise from early position, the big blind calls. Now they have straights and two pairs and lots of draws and whatnot. And you from under the gun, perhaps the best hand you could have is pocket aces, which loses to straights and sets and two pairs and all that. And in this scenario, 
If they check, you actually should not continuation bet this spot very often at all because you are heavily disadvantaged. When you're disadvantaged, you check a lot. When you're favored, you bet a lot. Also, some common patterns. Under pairs to top pair. So like, um, let's say, pocket tens on jack six three. And middle pairs very often check. Unless you're heavily favored. If you're heavily favored, you just bet with everything. But if you're not heavily favored, some of the first hands to check are those hands that are likely good, but if you bet and get raised, it's really bad. So those under pairs to top pair, middle pairs check a ton. Also, your bluffs are going to come from a mix of different types of bluffs, depending on stack depth, including high equity draws like ace high flush draws and straight flush draws that are really good. Medium equity draws like gut shot straight draws with two over cards. And then some really low equity draws like king high with a backdoor flush draw. And whenever you bet with all these types of draws, your opponent will have no idea which type of draw you have when you bet. And that puts them in a guessing game, right? You're going to find that the whole goal of this is to put your opponent in a guessing game where they cannot make a great decision. Cheers. All right. You need to choose the solver that's right for you because various solvers require a different amount of effort from you, the user. Poker Snowy is a program that has essentially used, I think they use some sort of AI program to run a player against a player over and over and over again until it has come up with a very good strategy that is very, very close to GTO. Poker Snowy takes almost no effort on your end to do any solutions. They already did it for you. You just get in there. You can run your hands through it. You can play and it'll tell you what to do. It's quite nice. Simple GTO Poker Trainer. This is a program that's also done something relatively similar where they have solved a lot of spots using a GTO solver and they have those resources available for you on the internet. You can just go through, click through, find the spot that's kind of close to yours. It'll give you a pretty good output. Biosolver makes you do all the work, but you can solve specifically the spot you are in and what you are looking for. This is particularly good for seeing, like we talked about earlier, which of the bet sizes you should actually be using because you can tell the solver to have six different bet size options or 10 or whatever, and it will take a long time to solve. It will use a lot of computer resources, but it will spit out a very, 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 very excellent answer. There are many more solvers that come out on a regular basis. I'm not going to list them all here. Some of them focus on multi-way. Some focus on other games like Pot Limit Omaha. Some use AI to solve the scenarios. Some have pre-solved a lot of spots for you. There are a lot of solvers. If you want to thoroughly study solvers more, you can check out mypokercoaching.com. But you need to find the solver that's right for you. So to wrap up, when should you use GTO? Primarily, you should use GTO when playing against strong opponents because they're good. You don't know how to exploit them. You don't know what they're doing. And the same thing goes when you're playing against unknown opponents who seem to play reasonably well because, again, you don't know what they're doing. GTO is great because all you have to do is implement it and you'll either break even or you will win when your opponents don't play perfectly. And that's fantastic. That said, you should not use GTO when your opponents make frequent mistakes that you can adjust to capitalize on. So many people, especially in the small and medium stakes games, blunder on a regular basis. And if they have big flaws in their strategy, you should not play GTO because, well, figuring out what they do wrong and adjusting maximally will win far more money than just sitting back and hoping they make some mistake that you passively capitalize on. So against players who are bad, adjust and crush them. That's going to be it for today. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, click the like and subscribe button below. Also, if you have a GTO solver that you enjoy using, maybe one that I didn't mention, feel free to type it in the comment section below so that others can learn from it too. Good luck in your games. Have fun. Click the notification bell before you leave because we have a lot of great content coming out here on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Enjoy getting your GTO on.